Welcome to the Long Range Pursuit Podcast, presented by Gunworks, where we learn about and share long-range shooting techniques, science, and gear. Well, I was thinking we call this episode Breaking Trail is Hard, or Innovation is an Uphill Battle. Maybe you got some other thoughts, Aaron, but there's a lot of work involved in building new products and not just building new products, but doing things kind of to your own beat of your own drum and innovating and not just coasting or building off of what everybody else going ahead of you has built before. You think about, I'm not a big backcountry skier, but the guy out in front that's freaking breaking trail through he's two, got the two nice feet powder. of fresh powder. Mm. He's well, taking some risk though. Well, and, and going up that mountain and the guys following him, he's, they've got nice packed trail oh, going up going the mountain, up. Yeah. right? Yeah. The guy, the guy going out front, he's working five times harder than the guy behind him. Right. And so, you know, in a, in a backcountry ski world, like you, either the really strong guy is out front and he's sacrificing for everybody else behind him, or you're taking turns you know, so, so everybody has a chance to kind of work and everybody has a chance to kind of recuperate and, uh, and, re- and recover, right? That guy breaking trail, cutting new paths is always the one that putting out all the work and the effort and everybody behind him, um, benefits from that. Yeah. I, I actually, I actually like the concept of building something creating something from nothing Mm -hmm. and so like for me the you know product innovation is just a segment of that i you know i love solving product problems i mean the engineers get sick of me i'm always in their Mm -hmm. office we're always talking about ways to do things and sometimes i contribute and sometimes i just break things but for me i i like to think of it if i back up and look of it in terms of uh entrepreneurship or creating a business like the you it's the same thing you're creating something from nothing Mm -hmm. and again that challenge to me uh kind of fits into the same category of of you know push and and create and do and so I, i i kind of have i kind of work on a lot of levels there when it comes to creating new I also I also do appreciate like the inventive step. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people in our industry that are that way that can take inspiration from where everything's been that c- they can add their own effort, right? And they can create something new. Mm-hmm. And and the whole industry benefits from that. And you know, I've got a handful of guys in my back pocket that I watch and I watch the products they create. And I admire them from afar because of the things that they do. And mm. I, I really do appreciate the, the idea of um, putting your own mark, you know, on the industry. Right. I mean, it takes a definitely a different mindset being um, being there to build a business or bu- being there to, you know, we're all we're all in it to make a living, right? Um, but there's also that I think that added layer on top where there's a a sport or a pursuit and an art that you are trying to improve and make better right it's like identifying problems and hey this doesn't work and why is everybody doing this way and being willing to accept that just because everybody does it that way doesn't mean it's the right way to do it right and i think that takes a special mindset and also takes being willing to to accept all the uh, the challenge that comes with tackling yeah. that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you look at you look at the the like the root question of this is why do it? Why? And yeah. like to set that up, like Josh, why don't you tell me just a little bit about your years at Gunworks and what that's felt like as an engineer, mm-hmm. and you know what how hard it's been. And then, and then let's come back to this why question because Josh is going to set it up and say, man, this is not easy. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, product development is, is very difficult. And I guess my years at Gunworks have been, uh, I feel like I've seen all ends of the spectrum here, you know, 
And, you know, as we, we talk about, you know, your interaction with engineering and stuff like that, kind of where my mind went is, is you're always pushing us, you know, even there's so many times when I get a solution that's like, okay, like we're, we're there, Aaron. And it's always like, you always take that last little bite out of it, you know, and just that one last little thing to push it across the line, you know, and I, I've always appreciated that working here and, and it's always, there's always a challenge. There's always a problem to solve. And, you know, I just, I feel like I would get bored somewhere else, like not being challenged, just mm -hmm. kind of laying up, getting the solution or a solution, not the solution. Um, and, you know, like you said, it all goes into the why we're doing what we're doing and, um, you know, how that provides value to our customer. Well, I think the Nexus is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. uh, was it, it was probably a, a large portion of your time at Gunworks has been dedicated to the Nexus. <coughs> uh, just put yeah. some context yeah. on this. Uh, Josh got hired as like an engineer too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three years ago? Three years, yeah. yeah. Three years. Yeah. Okay. And, and got thrown into projects and then... Uh, Josh is in charge of the engineering team now. Josh yeah. is engineering manager. So he he has the ability to take on the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that characteristic gets people promoted in Gunworks. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was able to take on the responsibility earned him that leadership role. And specifically around the Nexus, because that was absolutely a difficult project yeah it was we we uh gosh i gained an exponential amount of knowledge from that process from that project just i mean from i was humbled as an engineer i was you know humbled as a, a process guy uh and just the amount of things that i learned and kind of my whole take is i mean we had problems with it and like let's just be humble about it and step back and and more importantly for me, it was like, let's, let's document what went wrong and why it went wrong and how we're going to do to kind of safeguard that for next time. Right. If you, if I could sum up what went wrong in one word, mm -hmm. it would be optimism. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's easy to bite off more than you can chew. Right. And I think in our space an engi an engineer, you know, I hate negative Nellies, but an engineer really, really has to take the look of what could go wrong yeah 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 and it's it's honestly it's really i mean you start getting feedback you you, you know you get a product kind of ready to show people and you start getting feedback it it can be difficult to root out kind of what what somebody's personal preference is what if or if they're on to like hey they're giving me feedback and this means something or and you know you, then you get into the subjective nature of things and quantitative versus qualitative and it's it can be difficult at times to really funnel that through and I always, I always like to ask the why. Why is this person giving me this feedback? Like, because sometimes they're giving me a, a some form of feedback, and it's, you know, if you boil it down, there's a different reason why they're giving you that. And trying mm -hmm. to identify where the root cause of that is coming from is huge. Well, let's let's talk about let's talk about Nexus though. Let, mm -hmm. So, so we thought we were going to launch that. Was that twenty two? It was on the front cover of Guns and Ammo. What was it? June, was June of twenty two. Yes. Yeah. So we were we we had shown the product to uh, at our open house in mm -hmm. April. Is that mm -hmm. right? Is it yeah. April of twenty two? We th we thought was, we were there. It, it was awesome. It was received really well. It's mm -hmm. like you know we yeah we thought we were there right. And but, and we had what eighteen months into that. Uh yeah. It's yeah, about roughly, eighteen months into that, roughly, yeah. and and we had spooled up a bunch of parts. Like we were we were rock and roll, right? Mm -hmm. When did we actually start shipping? Uh, it was February of twenty three when we started when we shipped the first one. Okay, so there's roughly nine months of of uh, you know troubleshooting and. And how many times did we redo it in those nine months? Uh, how many times did we scrap <laughs> a batch of oh, production? Man. Oh lots i mean we we did eat a lot of scrap on there and and uh i think a lot of where i came from came into that was just scalability of the product mm -hmm. i mean we had a good functioning prototype but it's so it's one thing to design it and have it function but it's a whole nother ball game to make it and what, you, know, you said something the other day that i thought was pretty funny and it actually needs to become an engineering mantra which is if there's even a whiff of something not right mm -hmm. as an engineer in your alpha or beta like design yep. prototype you know verification even a hint 
Yeah. It's not going to get better when it goes to production. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that was probably my number one takeaway is like there's this people it's kind of human nature to hold on to the hope that it's going to work out or hope that it's going to get better yeah optimism right and that's really where i i that's been my biggest takeaway has been if there is any whiff of problem function safety performance anything along there like we better address it in its infancy stages because it's not going to get better when we have a thousand of them sitting on the shelf for sure we invented quite a few things on the nexus um the idea, and and like again, I'll try to make sure we circle back to that original why. But the idea behind the Nexus, let's talk about the why on that. Mm. Um, I had pushed for that product because I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to vertically integrate yeah. yep. a system into our shop where we could minimize the use of outsourced machining. Right. And, and if you look at the marketplace right now, uh, titanium receivers garner massive increases in dollars. And the reason why is because the materials more expensive, the processes to get them prepped are more expensive. Uh, we bore broach our GLR raceways. Mm -hmm. Um, we actually get a way better finish out of that than we do like wire EDM. Wire EDM mm-hmm. is pretty simple and it's hard to get those raceways perfectly straight. But if you do a bore brooch, mm-hmm. you are absolutely concentric and you are absolutely straight and you don't leave residue behind that you right. have to deal yep. with to make your action cycle smooth. So our, our receiver really work, works great. But the darn titanium breaks brooches all the time. Mm-hmm. The throughput on that is 25%. Mm-hmm. It's difficult. Um, and, and even just the whole concept of lug raceways, you know, creates these extra steps that you yeah. have to do, yeah. you know, in order to get that final product. And so the concept was, can we use aluminum, mm. which is way easier to deal with, which is way more available, lower cost. Can we lo- use aluminum to get the lightweight benefit of titanium mm-hmm. yep. without the cost? Yep. And so, so you start zeroing in on why this product, right? We wanted to get rid of the lug raceways. We wanted to use titanium for the weight characteristics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, start bringing into the concept of that uh, a really flexible system mm-hmm. that people are able to configure at home without gunsmithing tools. Mm-hmm. And so, so that concept right there mixed in with kind of where the market trend has gone for shooting support apparatus um, we always wanted to have a great magazine. You know, mm-hmm. we were ready for that next generation of stock design. And, and so now you start to get the reasons why we wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we could share some of the, some of the things that we learned al- along the way. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Well, why don't we, why don't we say, why didn't it launch right after mm-hmm. the, that April thing? Why did, what was the, what was the first thing that we ran into that was a difficulty? Sure. Um, I mean, the, the first one was just the scalability aspect. You know, we had brand new machines. Mm-hmm. Um, we were sourcing raw material. We ran into some pl- supply chain things there. We ran into like some, some heat treat type issues. So where the material wouldn't work in our machines and we had to, you know, try to engineer some of that, you know, like, like kind of, like I said, it is, we had this whole process side of things and, and the scalability aspect of it was, was probably the first struggle I think we had. Yeah. For and, sure. and so, so we, so we weren't ready to ship until the fall. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I remember distinctly taking, I had my Nexus out that spring in Africa Yep. and we shot some animals, had my son with me. Yep. Then we went out that fall and we were hunting elk mm-hmm. and, and we jump on the horses, you know, go up into our spot. We've got a yep. really cool setup where we can it's a low lift, high return <laughs> uh, elk place, which is awesome. Um, so we get into our spot and we're set up to shoot an elk and it's a long shot, but we've got an elk on a hillside and we have, you know, a fairly consistent, predictable wind and we've got the cartridge and the bullet to do it. And I, you know, Ian's a pretty good shot. So we take this shot and it missed by so far. I thought he must've got like, yep elk fever or something so i'm like wait a minute wait a minute what's what's going on here yeah you know settle down let's go through through the setup make sure everything's good relook at the wind take the dope take the shot 
hits the same exact spot, hmm. like yeah. within inches. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, man, something's not right here. And so like, if you, if you don't have control, then you got to stop. But while we're sitting there in the conditions, like I was trying to decide, was I missing a wind that was coming back in the other way? I couldn't see it. The train mm. wouldn't show it. The mirage didn't show it. Nothing was there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to learn. So we, at our same location, we literally turned 90, like into the wind direction that I thought I was going. There's a big rock face at about 1100 yards. And I mean, we'd already decided that like we were done hunting elk. That was yep. it. So we shot once and it hit four or five minutes, right? Mm. Yeah. We shot again. It was three minutes, right? Yep. We shot again. And by the time we shot three or four times, like now he was hitting right on. And so for me, I'm sitting here. I saw some windage misses in yep. Africa. And now all of a sudden the data starting to connect. I'm like, hey, something's not quite yep. right here. Yeah. Yeah. And I came home after that hunt, and you remember this. I Barrel came home. Time. We had 150 guns that we had built all the parts for, yep. anodized. Everything was done. We were getting ready to assemble and, and send them out. And I said, guys, we have a problem with our barrel joint. Yep. We need to explore this. We need to understand what's going on and stop all production yep. until we figure this out. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And this is, this is October. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, so we th thought we were going to. You'd be done April, May, yeah. June. Yeah. Now it's October and we have this issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, well, how long did that take us to sort that out? Uh, I would say two, three months by the time we had the solution in production. Yeah. I think it was late that year that we had that. And going. it took it took another month or two to get that yeah. dialed up. Didn't yeah, it? it did. It took another month or two. I get mean, it I, through production, get some anodized. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at it for probably three weeks, maybe a month, and then... And then it got time to design, prototype, test, kind of get stuck in that loop for a month. And then, and then you know, it's usually another few weeks, another month just to get it going in production. It's kind of a typical design cycle for anything. You know, and if, and if you can compare contrast, right, it's like if we had used the same old threaded barrel joint that we've yeah. used for forever, like that would have never been an issue, right? But, mm -hmm. but that's but the cost of... You can't yeah. do it with aluminum. No, nope. right? You can't. Right? Yeah, like so it's, it's not there. Yeah. So um, I, just wanted, I just wanted to talk about a little bit about the barrel joint. Like yeah. the outcome that we have now, would you say our barrel joint in the Nexus is the same as or worse than or superior to a standard you know, 60 degree V thread barrel joint. It is superior. Definitely. Absolutely yes, superior. Absolutely. And we've tested it and yes. we've proven it. Yep. Mm. Exactly. For yep. a couple different reasons, but now the outcome of that is mm -hmm. something that is yeah. significantly better. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought, I thought that was a pretty good example just to share yeah. the optimism and how that can kind of come bite you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, really the right thing to do when you find that there's a problem because it would have been really tempting because most of the customers wouldn't have experienced sure. that situation sure right or yeah. been able to yeah. understand yeah, just, what was going on we could have shipped a hundred a lot of guys would out. ship it and, yeah. and deal with the customer service you know after sure. after yeah. yeah yep um, so you know uh you, you were talking about brand pillars mm -hmm. and kind of brought that up in the outline for today's episode yeah. and you know, we have we have a couple brand pillars that I think are a reflection on our company, and also, you know, obviously, they're things that I believe in. Yeah. And you know, one of them is to be original. Mm -hmm. But you go all the way down to the bottom of it, right? Mm -hmm. Act with integrity. Mm -hmm. And and I think for, on our side, being able to have a really strong customer focus and understand. Yeah the long game and yeah. the long view and how you know hey if if something's not right we take care of it yeah you know yeah. and always the mantra at customer service is you know let's take care of our customer mm -hmm. you know when it comes to a new product it's like let's take care of our customer let's not ship something that we yep. don't know is it does that mean that we're perfect clearly not no right. yeah. no but because we... because when you're trying to be original when you never settle for status quo right. and when you're pushing to do something new to solve the problems yeah. in another way or to create a new product or to enter into a new space, mm -hmm. there's a lot of learning that has to happen to get there. Yeah. And, yeah. But I think if we follow the pillars, um, the net outcome is better for our customers. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think this is those pillars, I think, were kind of a result of, of this you know, a lesson learned type of thing. And like, here's the action we're going to take as a company to 
help safeguard us moving forward, you know? And I, I think what it does is it gives us, gives us a brand purpose and a mission statement and, and kind of outlines core values to Gunworks, what, what our employees do, what our customers expect and and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the, one of the coolest things that I've seen over the last decade, because we've always, we've always tried to do something new. Mm Mm-hmm. And you you go back to the very first rifle system we produced, and you go look at the stock on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was almost 20 years ago, guys. 20 years ago. And we spent spent a decade with some really cool things that we learned about the way rifle stocks work without saying anything Mm -hmm. in marketing or sharing it anywhere. And, 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 and notice co- how nobody nobody copied us until we started marketing. And it's like, hey, we actually mm-hmm. taught people how to. I know, yeah, but you get thirty thousand guns out there. Yeah. You have, you know, people shooting those, and it's such a such a contrast in experience mm-hmm. between kind of the old style long range gun yeah. with a straight comb and and switch over to a, a gunwork style stock in the same gun, same caliber, same weight. And it's like, wow, the recoil experience is completely different. Mm-hmm. The way the gun tracks everything. So we've been we've been pushing the boundaries from that to just really pushing people into ballistic turrets. And then, you know, the first rangefinder that did a real time ballistic solution. And then that smart scope that we did. Mm-hmm. And you just you look at the things that we've pushed onto the marketplace in the industry. Like we're always trying to push mm-hmm. that and make it mm-hmm. simpler and more sophisticated. Like you look at the old rangefinder, that thing was cool. Mm-hmm. Like you program your ballistics in there. You could use G1 or G7. Like nobody was doing G7 ballistic coefficients back then. Mm-hmm. Most of the calculation tools that were available didn't even do G7. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the manufacturers didn't publish G7. So, you know, uh, Brian Litz was pushing hard to measure and use those early. And so that's kind of where a lot of that early information came. And then the market is kind of pushed and followed into that space. But you look at that product and, you know, we initially had a compass in there, but the compass hygiene was so hard to, mm. you know, keep it accurate. Yeah. We we actually pulled it out, really? which means now you can't do Eoftos effect. Mm-hmm. And, and we didn't have a mechanism for putting a direction vector into the unit. So that means now you can't calculate and provide a spin drift solution. Mm-hmm. You know, we weren't doing arrow jump or any of those things. So it was basically just um, your, your drop and then mm-hmm. a, a base wind solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like it gets you to a thousand yards. And then after a thousand, you had to start doing, okay, I got to add some spin drift in. Let's do a little Coriolis, mm-hmm. a little Eotos effect and add those things in and now you look at where the br4 is and the new range finding bino the blr 10b mm-hmm. like those things are super sophisticated yeah. and they're not any harder to use as a customer in sure. fact i'd argue the app programming way yeah. easier oh yeah way easier yeah so again so let's go back to the why 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 is it worth it to risk you know, your company reputation to risk the financial aspect to produce a product that solves problems a different way. Why is it worth it? I'm, I mean, I'm curious what you guys think. It's all about, you know, value add, to, in my opinion. You know, how I don't think people buy uh, products, they're buying solutions to their problems. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think in order to, you know, get growth as a company and be an industry leader there, we got to identify those problems. And it's just, I don't think we're going to be successful for identifying problems that are already solved by somebody else. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's where I get with it is, it's just identifying who the customer is and what their problems are. And I mean, ultimately, I, if you I think solve there's that a path to be successful as a company that doesn't try to solve new problems okay. yeah. in terms of the product solutions, mm-hmm. like you can be successful as a company by going in and saying, Hey, look, I'm smarter on manufacturing. Mm-hmm we're going to beat the competition by manufacturing at a lower cost, mm-hmm. right? And and there's some companies that do a really good job of that, mm-hmm. like have impressive manufacturing capabilities. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But that, I don't, well, I don't find that near as interesting. It's just mm-hmm. what, what you rely on is your core competency, right? And I think we've, we've built a strategy where our core competency is innovation, right? And, it, and you mentioned earlier, it's the long game, right? And so you're looking at, okay, 
you know, how do I compete with everybody else out there? I'm not going to try necessarily try and compete with them on the manufacturing capability. I'm going to try and compete them with them on the innovation. I'm going to progress this sport and the technology and stay ahead of the game mm -hmm. that way, rather than than play in this um, kind of low low margin, low you know um, competitive space where we're just eking out little. Hey, I'm not here sure. I'm not hey, sure. We, sh I'm we not should sure do it all. Guys right? that are we bolding together Remington 700s with a yeah. with this stock and this action. This, I'm not sure that's a low margin. Well, I, and I guess I I'm not. I'm not implying it necessarily is. Those. It probably is, but but you know what I mean. You're you're working on tweaking and and improving on other ways to to win, right? I mean, look at these really high volume guys, and it's they've they've got a. Um, find other ways to mm -hmm. to win right yeah. rather than on making something that is truly unique and different and, and innovative yeah um i think the other piece is simply pride in what you do and passion about what you do that's where right? i was going to go next was, yes. yeah was it's like would, we're, we're, would you we're, feel we're the same about food, right? would you feel the same about an assembled rem platform yeah. gun yeah you know using other people's components yeah. versus a nexus mm-hmm at, at our core, we're building what we want, right? We're dreaming yeah. up. It's like, how cool would that be? Let's make it, right? What I what we want within the within, within the, the re realm reality of, of getting reason. it. Yeah, sure. like my my vision of what I want is five ten years away. Yeah, yeah. like we don't have the engineering competency to mm -hmm. achieve what I want yet, yeah. but there's a roadmap in place that takes us Steps to step get by step to get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hundred percent. Okay, so so why I actually I actually think the pride of of brand, the pride of product, and mm -hmm. the ownership of it. I mean, yeah. the blood and sweat and tears of yeah. what went into that Nexus. Mm -hmm. Just think, you know, just think about the freaking iterations on the magazine. When I yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of that when I when I was prepping for this this podcast. I was kind of reflecting on how many hours do I actually have into this. And yeah. it was a solid year of you my life. I don't want to think like, about it. Yeah. I, I would estimate over 3,000 hours. Yeah. I think most of it was at the back end when yeah. we were we were running, gunning, troubleshooting, yeah. and fixing exactly. most of your time on that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, which isn't pleasant time. No, it's not. It's and it, it was. Yeah, it gets very difficult when it's on the back end, right? And you just gotta yeah. make the best decision you have with the information you have. Um, and okay, just, here's just, here's another one. What's the worst decision that we made in the product specifications requirements, whatever? <laughs> That's where I was going. <laughs> of the of the Nexus. Hmm. I know. What the I, I was coming is. at that from a different angle, but I think I know the answer too. <laughs> I don't know. I, I uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's hard to like for me to just summate one right because I was the <laughs> guy live, all... living this and like it's too th soon. They were all too bad. Soon. Like one is too many in my opinion. But... I, I was bringing up the three position safety. Okay, yeah, and and saying so. you know sure. think about okay we we knew we wanted a three position safety right, but just imagine if we'd have said okay mm -hmm. fine two position safety how much of your uh, of your life you'd have back yeah right probably a thousand hours of that yeah 3, well if you, if you go back if you go back to the origination though. The three position safety was a layup. Mm -hmm. the, the ask was a decocker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the ask. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I know that kind of that kind of stretched a little longer. I, I do want I do want to point out that the the Nexus is, in my opinion, it's our flagship product. Mm -hmm. I think it reflects our values in product innovation, manufacturing capability, yeah. like design. I think it reflects our values more than any other product we yeah. produce. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Absolutely. And, and it it's what's taking us into the next generation of gun which products. It's why we called it the Nexus, right? It's, I mean, it it represents so much in your visionary um, kind of path for the business to take us into the next generation of Gunworks products, to innovate, to add all these new features that we were limited with this Rem 700 platform. There's, there's just, I think that... If, if we stepped back 30 years from now and looked at the timeline of Gunworks, I think that is one of the biggest formative moments in Gunworks history. It was a big lift. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that, that the Revic products, the smart scope, I mean, from a technology standpoint, it's, it's a magnitude of order, yeah. more sophisticated. But from an actual, like, you know, design, build, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. succeed, I think, I think that 
um, the learning experiences from the Nexus are pretty strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think I've learned my lesson on Nex uh, Revic stuff yet. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I said earlier, the, the big thing for me was just documenting mm -hmm. and you know, that's kind of where, how I'm taking it forward is, is, is standardizing how we develop products and the process we do and the, the, the testing validation requirements we have, the fundamental design criteria, the things yeah. that we just don't change along the process. Just so, you know, on the next project, we, we, we that's all captured and then it goes into that. And then more importantly, as we get, you know, newer engineers here mm -hmm. is training those guys and really spending the time up front on, on how to, you know, the gun works way and how to design firearms and, and things like that. <laughs> Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about in this podcast, and you guys are a, a, a key part of this, is the idea of establishing a launch culture and mm -hmm. cadence at Gunworks. Yeah. You know, because we, we have this, you know, every three or four years, then a year, and then maybe 10 years. Yeah, like, kind of... we have this this space where we, we're not there. Um, we have, you know, trials and tribulations. Um, I think most of the stuff on the Nexus would have been preventable. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. with good systems, I think we could have had a Definitely. more controlled. I don't think it would have got to market any faster, though. No, no, I don't think so. We just ha would have a more realistic yeah. expectation that's, going into it. That's always been my theory. The engineering time goes into it either <laughs> on the front end in evaluation or <laughs> yeah, on the back, back end. Yeah. It, it's a you know, dealer's choice, you know, and it's. I you know. wanted to point out that, um, again, back to building things, like I love solving the problems in yeah that businesses have like organizations and those aren't just paper problems. I mean, they're people problems as well. It's like yeah. the right people have to be in the right organization or system to flourish and function so that mm -hmm. the business and the customers benefit from that. If you look at how we're structuring and organizing our product management, mm -hmm. so new for Gunworks in the last couple of years is establishing a product management team mm -hmm. and I can take you back eight years ago I have a I have an organization chart that I've been working for for almost a decade mm -hmm. that had a product management division yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's taken this long to get there and now we have a product management team we have two product managers for gun for gunworks we have a project manager mm -hmm. and then we have an engineering manager and team mm -hmm. and and then you go, you go look on the production side. We've got the R and D um, capabilities to actually build these things mm -hmm. and do our iterations, and then our production. And we're not like we're not completely smooth because a lot of these changes have happened in the last year, mm -hmm. year and a half. And yep. I mean, we have people that are only three weeks old here. Mm -hmm. But if you look at where this is going and look down the road a year or two years. I mean, we will have a great system and cadence and mm -hmm. capability. Yeah. One of the things that I've I've been uh, struck with that's the most significant is as we've brought our new products into the PM software and we've literally mm -hmm. broke it down into stages and phases mm -hmm. and, yeah. and th all these things that we've known and we've attempted to do in the past, once you start making time dependencies and Gantt charts and you, you really look at it mm -hmm. and then with our experience of, hey, we're not going to nail this on the first yeah. prototype, we're mm -hmm. going to do two prototype cycles. Yep. We're gonna, not going to nail this on the first beta production loop, we're going to do two loops and yeah. we're going to budget this much time for testing and here's the test plan is our expected time versus the actual time. Mm -hmm. Actual time's double. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah. It's double. Yep. I, like we thought we were gonna have this product out this year, mm -hmm. June, then it was October, and the more sophisticated <laughs> now it's, our, now <laughs> yeah. it's January. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's a more realistic one. And I think, I think every time we have a meeting, it's like, oh, we're on time, we're mm -hmm. on task. Mm -hmm. We got a couple things we need to make sure we get done. We can't we can't slack, but it's like, you can see that the pace is really working out. And so mm -hmm. I think we have this challenge of building that pipeline, but I'm really, really excited about um, the cadence that's going to become established by. Oh yeah. By yes. This. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing I've seen happen just from my seat is, is the, the product roadmap is a lot more sophisticated mm. where we, you know, we've got dates and volumes and, and cost goals and, and things like that on it. And it gives us that visibility 
And then you go another layer yeah. of our, our whole PRD process. That is 10x more sophisticated than it was before. Yeah. On and, that. you know, I think we've been a little bit, um, we've been so spread thin over the years and not organized enough that it's like, well, okay, sometimes a squeaky wheel gets a grease or it's like, oh, we need a suppressor. Well, let's let's build a suppressor. That line sits for five years and gets nothing, mm -hmm. right? Because it didn't have any any kind of real ownership or direction. It just, we knew we needed a suppressor. Well, now when you start adding attention, all of a sudden you've got this pipeline and this plan. When you put a, a manager in place. product line, exactly, yep. Yep. right. Yep, so, um, so for the, our audience, uh, Landon moved out of marketing into product management last mm -hmm. year. And Landon is running the our our bipod shooting support apparatus mm -hmm. uh, 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 products suppressors mm -hmm. and ammunition. Those yeah. are the those are the core products that Landon's mm -hmm. running. And then we've got a, another product manager that's running rifle systems and components. And so now Landon's like, hey, let's <laughs> yeah, make right. some new, let's, new let's, stuff, yeah, right? You have somebody paying attention to that's that, exactly right? Yeah, no, really cool. Yeah, in yeah. charge of chasing those resources i yeah. i actually think that organization is is awesome and a lot of other companies have figured out we didn't invent this mm -hmm. like yeah. we just it just took us a long ways to bootstrap into this yeah. and work yeah. into a position where yeah. we can afford the investment into the team yeah it's cool yeah. so um a couple other products that we've had um uh we've done work with is our bipod mm -hmm. and and i think it bears mention because um you know they are we are right in the middle of Right. relaunching the the elevate bipod yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and and both of you played a huge role in you know we've maybe launched that a little too quick mm -hmm. same very and, similar story you know found uh customers found ways to use the product that didn't align ways with, to break our product yes. that we mm -hmm. had not yeah. <laughs> not yep. discovered yet. yeah <laughs> they're, they're apparently better at that than us we yeah. can get better at it no and that yeah. was actually a learning experience i think is the way that we use things isn't always good enough yeah. as yep. the test case. Yeah. yeah, and I think those little, those little customer sample, you know, mm. beta test platforms where you actually put it in other people's hands. Yeah, yeah, and and let them find ways that you have yeah. problems. It's, you know, yeah. look at software or hardware, both. Like, yeah, you can find things that. You know, I think there's something else to add there that um, is is standards too, mm -hmm. right? Because honestly. You know, I wouldn't knock on anybody else, but I would bet you that 90% of businesses out there would have just let that product ride and been happy with it because it, it probably would have seen it, the a, a 20, was 20, 30%. I don't you know, think it's that If high. that, right? No. Like on a, yeah. And so I think most guys would have just said, you know what? It's good. There's a few break and we'll fix them. We'll repair them, mm -hmm. warranty them as they come in. And, but that's just not how we, we operate, right? It, we are I actually, so I actually, obsessed I actually have with a hard time a with product. one unhappy customer. Yeah, right. Like that mm -hmm. really, yeah. really yep. bothers me. Yeah, yep. and so you know, I, I think I think that there is an important distinction is distinction there that um, not everybody has the same standards there, and mm -hmm. we're you know we're obviously obviously not perfect, but we're really trying to hold ourselves to that same standard because it's what we would expect. Yeah, yeah. From, yeah we launched that one customer, too soon. Yeah. It needed to go through a couple more iterations yeah. and yeah. cycle tests. Yeah. Um, I think right. one thing that we come that came out of that one was establishing a very regimented test criteria. Yeah. yeah. Actually yeah. kind of pulling a little bit from what we do over at Revic, where mm -hmm. it is exhaustive. Right. The, I, the I actually testing. looked at we documented all the testing on that and we have over forty pages of like testing, like procedure setup results, yeah. like all of that. Like it, Pretty wild. We we tested the snot out of that thing. Yeah, I really um, like where we the, we solve we all those little things that were like, ooh, that's not quite right. That's we, that is the example. Didn't right get there. better in production. It's yep. like we solved every one of those, yeah. and yeah. that it's very robust now. I'm yeah. very excited about yeah. that. Yeah, we uh, yeah. I can I guess kind of a takeaway I had from that is is getting that outside feedback because mm -hmm. we did. We had a lot of internal people testing this. We had yeah. 20, and a decent, we had 20 and a of decent things. amount of outside actually yeah we well we had um, 20 but, 20 yeah. of these things in the field yeah, right yeah. It, like the fall least, before and yeah. didn't really see any of this and it, it's kind of getting that outside feedback is going to be big for me moving mm. forward and test plan yeah test plan and being then, being being the engineer that says what could go wrong yeah, yeah exactly and keeping an open mind and, and again back to being humble about it right yeah yeah it's yeah. the thing about engineers and engineering is you know, you, you, people start critiquing your baby. It's easy almost. to take it not personally, right? Not invented here syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. We had a little yeah. bit of that going on. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so one of the I want to just 
come back to that brand pillars. Mm -hmm. It's like we're right in the middle of you know producing, re starting up production again. Right. Yeah. We're going to replace every, every single one of one those, of those bipods. bipods that we sent yeah. out, whether you've had a problem or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hook you up with a new unit. Yeah. Yep. And that's part of that, like that commitment to, hey, we we're not going to do this again. But yeah. if we ever do have a mistake, we yeah. take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Hmm. Cool. Um, so I think um, along that same line, we have the recall on suppressors. Maybe is a good mention. Yeah, that's a, it's like yeah, this is going to start sounding story. like a mea culpa, but yeah. but just in case anybody hasn't already sent their titanium suppressor in, we've got mm -hmm. an easy fix. We replace mm -hmm. a part and yeah. uh, had a little engraving issue on some um, embrittlement. Mm -hmm. But I, I really, really would like everybody to um, make sure that they hear this. If they have yeah. a titanium suppressor and they haven't sent it in yeah. for repair, it's, it's I think we're turning we're turning them quick. over in a week. Yeah. So yeah. like it's quick. took us a while to get there, but now we we're turning them over really yeah. fast, yeah. and uh, all the new production is updated. So right. um, we're back rolling on titanium. Yep. Yeah, and I think it's you know it's all this belly aching and and all the pain and suffering that's kind of taken us to get to these points. But I think we'd be remiss without saying like going back to the Nexus, it took a little bit getting there, but it's awesome. Yep. Mm -hmm. now, right it's like the same with the bipod yeah the concept and features of the bipod were phenomenal the execution of a few yeah. little Dude, the things, response was overwhelming was we missed we missed we almost yeah. missed the market demand by a factor of 10 yeah, yeah. like we were almost it we're almost off that much yeah. it was mm -hmm. amazing yeah, yeah. So, and and all yeah. the customers that put orders in yeah held their orders all week so We've that got i mean a all bunch winter. of back orders yeah. to fill yeah. Yeah. but i think that's really problems. awesome that we have guys that are willing to stick to us yeah. and wait as well. So yeah. mm -hmm. we have the best yeah. customers. I mean, we, we have, we definitely need to commit to not letting those things through, but you know, we appreciate our loyal customers are willing to, like yeah. you said, kind of, kind of work with us to get there. Well, I think and, as we, as we look at these projects with the PM software mm -hmm. and we actually plan the mm -hmm. time, like it's all the same time, just like yeah. Josh says, you either do the engineering on in the front, front or the back. End. And now that mm -hmm. we're planning, like I'm really excited for these next projects we're doing that, yeah. you know, have the cadence and have the test plan and have the yeah. multiple iteration loops. Yeah. You know, I, I think we're going to have control of that. I'm yeah, very definitely. excited about it. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Well, what else do you guys want to talk about? I think we call it, talked about the launch culture. Maybe mm -hmm. we can circle back to the overarching why. I think that's mm -hmm. how yeah. to wrap it up. Why go through all this pain and suffering? Mm -hmm. Why push yeah. so hard? Yeah. And for me, I would say it's because of my commitment to our brand mm -hmm. and our team. Mm -hmm. We have 95 families yep. that we support. Yeah. Our, our products that we introduce now are a big part of our brand and what our mm -hmm. Gunworks brand means and and what it will mean a decade from now. Yeah. And for me, it's like, why push on the innovation? Why, why push for that? It's because it, it creates a brand that's lasting mm -hmm. and not just a company that's out there making profits. Yeah. It's like yeah. that investment is to create into the brand. Yeah. That, that's, that's my why. Yeah, definitely. You? Uh, yeah, I mean, it... it for me, it's just, I'm always going to focus on making the best products possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, from all, everything we've talked about in this podcast is, is, you know, always doing my, doing our diligence on the front end and making the best products we can that are going to ultimately, you know, meet the needs of our customer and, and, um, you know, with innovation and things like that being one of our core competencies, that that's where we're always going to go, you know, and, and I'm always going to be thinking, Maybe not the five years down the road type of thing, but like what's what's going to be the next project? What's mm -hmm. you know, and try to get in front of it as much as possible so that we can compress those timelines and and um, you know do the best we can on the engineering side. Yeah, um, and you know, be humble. I just keep going back to that. Is yeah. is if somebody has feedback, let's let's really root it out and figure out why they have that feedback and what they're trying to achieve with it and and how we can uh, implement that and in, into the next iteration. Humility doesn't seem to be a, a really important characteristic of yeah. an engineering team mm -hmm. but if you think about it that yeah. sense of self-awareness and and lack of ego around mm -hmm. design Being it will, your own it, will critic, it will right? yield the best outcome yes yeah, so i actually i actually think it's a very very 
important characteristic yeah, of an engineer. Yeah. 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 Yep. How about you, Landon? I think it's pretty much in line with what you said. And I think the only thing I would add is it's to me, I'm a gear nut, right? It's like, I get really excited about cool gear, cool products. And so to me, building that product that I am really excited about and not just that, but then seeing our customers taking that product mm -hmm. into the field and killing a world record bull with it, you know, these giant rams coming out of the North Country, like, and the excitement and the passion that those customers have and how those products contribute to those experiences that they have to me. It's like, I may not get to go on that sheep hunt, but the next best, best thing is watching our customers yeah. and, and experience that with our products. To me, that's that's what keeps me going yeah. day in day. Yeah, I, I would I would second that. I really enjoy you know when I put so much work into mm -hmm. developing these products, and you know we as a you know a company, I mean do all that work to launch it and get it out the door. It's yeah. really rewarding to see people you know uh, use it for their needs and and make their dreams come true. And you know we're all. Most of us here too are, are big hunters and, and, you know, we have a personal stake in the products we use as well. Mm -hmm. Um, they got to fulfill our needs too. So it's, that's always, I've been a big advocate of that, you know, being as an engineer, being the end user of the product and understanding how the customer is going to interface with the product is going to be huge. Yeah. A lot of you value know, there. I, I, we didn't talk about this, but we have a really great outdoors hunting oriented culture in our company we do yeah i mean you go look at how many people participate in the the hunts that we put together for mm -hmm. our teams to go on and yeah and how much fun those are with people from all departments like mm -hmm. I, it is it customer is us like yeah. we are the guys that use these products mm -hmm. and, and i do think we do have a yep. seriously vested interest in producing stuff that's great um one i just want to maybe end on um a little excerpt from you know our purpose is we engineer exceptional experiences and products like mm -hmm. that is a core focus of our company mm -hmm. and and building systems and creating the investments so that that we can live up to that is mm -hmm. a, a key promise that i make to our customers yep. and and looking at gunworks now five years from now ten years from now i'm very excited, very happy, very confident in the path that we're on and the moves that we're making. And I, I do want to shout out and really thank uh, our customers because yeah. they are the people that have enabled this brand to yep. do these things. Yeah. Without our customers, we don't have anything. Yep. Yeah. They, they literally are funding the changes to our industry, pushing mm -hmm you know, the ballistics, you know, the, the better stock designs, all of those things, mm -hmm. they originate with our customers. Yeah. So our commitment is we are going to live up to that promise, to that purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are on board, then we're good. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's Ready do it. Go. Yeah. Cool. All right. Until next time. If you like what you're hearing here, please take a second and give us a five-star rating and a positive review on iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. We appreciate your feedback and suggestions for topics you'd like discussed or questions you want answered on the podcast. You can reach out on Facebook or Instagram or send us an email to podcast at gunworks.com. Also, be sure and check out our full offering of long-range gear at gunworks.com. Use promo code LRP for free shipping on any order.